Camp for the chapter CPD webinar this morning. Uh, I'm architect uh, B. Su Yang. You can call me by surname B. Okay, so I, uh, you should notice there's a sign in code. Please uh, jot it down and at the end of webinar, to show the sign up code and please fill up the Google form with the code for the CPD purpose. For information, uh, this webinar will also broadcast in our Camp Northern Chapter Facebook page. Please uh, share it with your friends. However, just watch from Facebook, we're not able to claim CBD point. I wish to thanks for BMI Malaysia to sponsor this webinar and presenting the topic of uh, roof fuel value, leak proof solution and roof system warranty. <clears throat> okay, a building accounts for up to 40% of energy consumption, especially in tropical country like Malaysia, where a big amount of the energy in is just on air conditioning to cool down the living space. This scenario was more significant for landed house, where the ratio of roof surface was higher compared to the wall. Our lawmaker was introduced across to the A in the current UBBL Amendment 2012, which required all building roof to be insulated for reducing cooling energy. So there's a different approach to insulate our roof. One of the most effective methods to counteract the heat radiation into the living space is by the installation of radiant barrier or reflective insulation. The implementation of this solution as mentioned in the UBBL cross the DAA drastically helps in reducing energy consumption or cooling off the buildings. <clears throat> A roof has to be well secured in order to protect the occupants and it matters that it is long lasting from free from risk of water leakage. Leak proof solution targeted at different areas of the roof ensuring long lasting water tightness and by offering roof system guarantee to ensure peace of mind to the owner in terms of water tightness. Uh, this session will be presented by Mr. Lee Seng Fong from BMI Malaysia Mr. Lee experience in system solution engineering and his main role and involvement include managing the roof system components, product portfolio, and driving product innovation by utilizing data-driven market research. <clears throat> uh, we will have a Q&A session after the presentation. So you may raise your hand and unmute yourself to raise your question to our speaker. Or if you have any question throughout the seminar, you can type your question into the chat box for discussion during the Q&A session. Next, let us welcome our PEM Northern Chapter Chairman, Architect Liao Kun Chun, to deliver his opening remark before the presentation starts. Thank you very much, Architect B, and good morning to you. Thank you. Um, uh, as usual, a very good morning, uh, Friday morning to you all. Uh, on behalf of Pam Norton Chapter, I'd like to thank you all for attending this webinar. I know it's a working day. Uh, thank you, Architect Chong Kok Chun, our Pam Norton Chapter Education Chairman and our ever-efficient Secretariat for organizing this event. Thank you to Garis PXL for helping us host the webinar. And uh, thank you to our sponsor for the event, BMI, and of course, to our presenter, Mr. Lee Sing Fong and his associates. I think today's topic is roof U-value, leak-proof solution to roof and roof system guarantee. Okay, the introduction of solar and heat gain in buildings in the tropics through the walls, opening and roof of major, a major contributor to increased temperature in our internal environment. Generally speaking, we can counteract this heat gain in two ways. One is an active approach to a passive approach. In the active approach, it is usual for us to counter heat gain in our building by activating air conditioning, fans, and all other mechanical means. The obvious disadvantage, of course, is the consumption of energy in, in using this method. We should try to avoid this as much as possible. Number two, the passive approach. Through careful and practical design like building orientation, sun shading, building overhangs, K 
careful design of openings. Another passive approach is to incorporate isolating and insulating materials to the appropriate area of the buildings, like the roof, the wall, and also the windows to counteract the solar gain. Cross ventilation in our buildings can also contribute to the reduction of heat gain through the wind, through wind flow across our building. Now this, today we are talking about the roof. Suitable isolation and insulating material applied properly can help reduce not only solar gain, but also can reduce airborne and impact noise transmission through the roof. Apart from that, it also prevents water egress at the roof when it's actually designed and detailed properly. Not forgetting also the security aspect of the roof. The roof must serve as a protective and secure barrier for the occupants of the building. I don't want to go into too much because I think Mr. Lee will actually go into the details. Today's webinar, Mr. Lee and some, will, and some other issues highlighted will be presented. The information indeed will be very useful for our member. I'll hand it back to Architect B. I'd like to thank, uh, on behalf of Pam Northern Chapter, thank you everybody for attending the webinar and thank you for your support as always. Architect B, up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Chairman. Uh, next, we will pass to Mr. Lee to proceed with his uh, presentation. So, uh, Mr. Lee. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Architect B and Architect Liao for the introduction. And thank you everyone as well for taking time off on a Friday working day for this webinar as well. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sheng. Sorry, Mr. Lee, you may increase your voice. Oh, okay. Um, the, is this better? Yes. All right. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending to this webinar. On behalf of BMI Malaysia, we, I would like to extend uh, my thanks to Pam as well for giving us this opportunity for this webinar. So, um, as, I, as I mentioned, my name is Sheng Kong. I'm from the BMI Roofing uh, Systems. So, before I begin the webinar this morning, uh, I would like to take uh, probably a few minutes of everyone's time just to help us to uh, follow us on the social media page and also connect to us via LinkedIn as well because we will be posting uh, more product information periodically on these pages for everyone's knowledge as well. So probably you can take a few minutes to follow us. Okay, maybe I can begin with my presentation. So, okay, um, first thing first, today's focus will be more on about roofing. So what is a roof? What is the main purpose of a roof? To us, a roof can have many different definitions. But the main purpose of a roof is actually to be as a protection to us. And does it matter actually a roof? You know, it besides providing comfort and protection, it also serves as an aesthetic to the to the to the buildings, to the homeowners, or to the people that is using utilizing the space underneath as well. So roof comes in many different sizes and shapes. There are many different roofs like pyramid roof, mansard roof, shed roof, many, many different forms of roof as well. How do we begin to begin choosing the, the type of roof? Of course, uh, different roofs have different functions and different shapes. And to us, in the end, it actually breaks down to the form and the function that we want to achieve. For example, pyramid roof, it looks it looks pleasing to the eye. It looks nice. But yet, uh, the attic space is not usable for storage. You know, there's very limited space to access the attic. Whereas for a mansard roof, it looks nice as well. At the same time that because of the shape, it allows for functions to be added into the, to the roof. We can, we can access the attic for storage and other purposes as well. Shed roof. This is by far one of the most easiest and also lowest cost to, to build. But at the same time, it does not serve too much of a function because it does not have an attic. And at the same time, it does not provide much ventilation as well. So at the end of the day, it depends on what do we want to achieve and how do we balance, whether it's in terms of the design, 
the appearance, how it looks, how it, how it shapes, the colors, and also balance it with, do we want any additional function to it? Do we want the roof to serve any additional benefits to the people living underneath it? Which is why uh, thermal comfort, one of the important points when we are designing a roof. How do we define thermal comfort? I'm sure most of us has come across this, uh, this word some point at some point of life as well, especially given, given the fact that you know, we are living in Malaysia where thermal comfort is actually one very, very talk about topic. So basically, thermal comfort is defined as how we perceive or feel for our body in regards to the surrounding temperature. It could be very cold. It could be very hot. It depends. And how we perceive and feel for it is defined as the thermal comfort. Is thermal comfort important? I would say yes. In fact, it is actually one of the most important aspects to consider during the design of the roof. Why? Because on average, if you were to calculate, right, a human actually spends at least 18 hours or even more underneath a roof on a daily basis. Um, for example, if you could be spending 8 to 10 hours at home, another 8 hours in the office, and probably a few more hours uh, having lunch at some building. So in total, you know, we are spending most of our day underneath a roof, which is why thermal comfort, it is not something to be negotiated with. It's not something that, you know, we can make do with. No, it is actually a necessary element in for, especially for the case of designing a roof or even a building. So how do we measure this thermal comfort? You know, we could, we could just get a thermal couple device, you know, that is something used with a sensor to measure the surrounding temperature. And from there, we can tell, you know, what is the temperature? Is it a comfortable temperature to us? Is it a, is it a suitable temperature to us? And so on. So that is one way we can do. But definitely, this is not something where it's not a conventional device that everyone has and everyone will use. No. So what we do in Malaysia is that uh, we have this UPBL, Uniform Building by Law, Clause 38A. So for this clause, there's actually two parts to it. The first part saying that for new and renovated non-residential building with air-conditioned space exceeding 4,000 square meter, usually this applies to shopping malls, we have to design it to meet the requirement of MS1525, the energy efficient, in regards to the OTTV and also the RTTV. So in the case of, uh, for my side, uh, I would not be able to advise too much on the OTTV but what I can do is uh, we can go about the RTTV, the roof thermal transfer value, which brings us to the second point of this clause. For all the buildings that we are designing or even building, regardless if it's a residential or even a non-residential building, it shall not have a thermal transmitter, or we call it a U value greater than 0 0.4 for lightweight and 0 0.6 for heavyweight. So in the case of uh, roof tiles, roof tiles or even metal deck, we are considered as lightweight roof. So for the context of this uh, webinar, we will be using 0 0.4 as a, as a standard, as a measurement. So by having this U value, of course, uh, there's certain procedures and steps to, to documenting these calculations as well. So the principal submitting person, okay, the architect, shall or must endorse and submit all the necessary roof view value calculation with the documents. What kind of documents? Firstly, you will need the, the plans and the elevation of the roof and those that you have used for calculation, you have to mark it in blue color. Also a very clear and accurate description of all the roof materials being specified along with the roof drawing as well. In case if you have several different kinds of roof in your design, then we will need to provide every single roof new value calculation for them as well. And all those plans and documents and calculation in the end of the day, uh, what is important is that we, the principal submitting person have to endorse it, have to review and endorse it, and then it will be submitted to the local authority. Depending on which states you are, you have a different local authority. And... From there on, that plans and calculation, the documents will actually be installed in their, I would say, in their archive. 
So in case of uh, there's a need for performing checking, probably periodically checking, or in case that there might be some unfortunate incident which required them to review the plans and the calculation, or else they would usually not like take it out so often. So of course, local authority may carry out random checks at time as well to make sure that uh, we are all committing and fulfilling the necessary uh, laws and regulation. So then, with all those steps and procedures and the requirement, how do we calculate U-value? Um, based on our experience, uh, we, we have been providing a lot of uh, products and technical talks as well to many different architects and also to developers. So we do notice that uh, there is a, a, probably a challenge in calculating the roof view value because the, the message and the guide on calculating this was not really uh, delivered so accurately or so, so strongly to everyone in Malaysia. So for this part, I will be talking more on how do we go about the calculation. In terms of the formulas or the, or the method, there is actually a guide that has been published by the Working Committee of RIM, RIMM, Reflective Insulation Manufacturer Malaysia, and also with the joint effort of GBI as well. So this guidebook was actually published back in 2020, and currently this is the only version that we are using. So we could, it's safe to say that this is the latest one and we can all be referring to this guidebook as well. So in this guidebook, uh, it's, not, it's not a very long guidebook. In fact, it's, there's probably about probably 20 pages or so. So in this guidebook, at the first few pages, you might notice that there are these kinds of tables. It looks a little bit complicated and crowded. So this table is actually referring to the RSI or we call it the R value of enclosed airspace. So the reason why we have different kinds of table in this, uh, in this part of the booklet is that you notice that there is for emittance equals to 0 0.03, 0 0.05, and 0 0.5, and so on. So what does this mean? Emittance actually basically refers to how well the surface is able to radiate heat. So in another words, the lower your emittance, the, 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 the worse it is as emit, at radiating heat, the better that material will be performing in reflecting heat, which is what we want to achieve in our case of the roof view value. Because as the heat radiated from the sun onto the roof, we wanted to reflect that heat back up instead of letting the heat radiated around the roof or even the attic area which would then actually increase our internal temperature as well, the internal uh, room or internal building temperature. And this caused the usage, the heavy usage of air conditioning, which would then in turn convert into uh, electrical energy and also the monthly electricity bill that we are paying right now. So in the case of pure aluminium, it is classified as to have 0 0.03 emittance, meaning to say, Emittance and reflectivity, they are, they are in indirectly proportionate, meaning to say if I have a material with 0 0.03 emittance, that is to say that it has a 3% emittance, which also translates to the fact that it has a 97% reflectivity, which in, the, in this case is actually very good. That is also the reason why uh, all the underlays, I would say, all the radon barriers, the reflective insulation in the market, are made of pure aluminium because it has the highest reflectivity. If you are looking for something even better than aluminium, we do have it. It is actually gold and silver, but definitely it is not a logical decision to use gold and silver to produce radon barrier due to the cost and also availability. So in the case of the of us identifying what are the material of our radon barrier and reflective insulation, that is when we will also know which table should I refer to in order to obtain the RSI or the R value. But that also brings us to the next question, you know, how do we determine the emittance? We know that you know, pure aluminium is actually 0 0.03, but what about other materials like metallized film? Plastics, what are those emittance? How can, how do we refer to all this? A simple way is that, you know, 
uh, I believe that all the manufacturers for radiant barrier in reflective insulation, at least for Malaysia, we do send the, the products to be tested in serum in accordance to the MS2095 standard. So in that particular test report, there is a section that is dedicated to the emittance. You can see as, uh, as the sample that I've attached there. For both this sample, you can see there is surface one and surface two. This shows that that particular radiant barrier or reflective insulation has double-sided. So it has a surface one and a surface two. And depending on the material, uh, in fact, actually, serum, you know, they, they don't really uh, stop you or they don't really set that, you know, what kind of material you have to use because any of the material, it has a certain emittance to it. In the end of the day, what they want to do is determine the emittance of the material chosen by you. So for the, for the case of the left side, right, you notice that uh, there is surface one, surface two, and for surface one, the emittance is 0 0.02. And for surface two, the emittance is 0 0.01. So if we were to translate this into reflectivity, you know, it has a very high reflectivity, 98% and 99% in fact. And for the example at the right side, you notice that the, the, the emittance is slightly different. Surface 1 has a low emittance, but surface 2 it has a higher emittance. So this shows that the two different materials are being applied in that particular radiant barrier or reflective insulation. So from this numbers from the information that we, we can obtain from the certificate, we, we are able to determine which table to be used. When we are looking at the table A1, emittance of 0 0.03, it means that anything 0 0.03 and below will refer to this table. But for the case of this, because it has two different emittance for surface 1 and surface 2, so in regards to our calculation, we will need to refer Two different tables depending which direction the surface one face and which direction the surface two face we will need to refer to different uh, calculation in the table as well so in this table uh it looks it looks complicated but actually it's quite a straightforward table because there's only two uh two, two criteria to be considered firstly is the roof pitch angle ranging from zero to up to 90 degree and also secondly is the uh, of the enclosed airspace, the air gap or the airspace, or even the baton, purlin, and rafter thickness ranging from 5 mm up to 125 mm. So different, different combinations of both of these will provide you with a different R value, which we will be using later on when we are calculating. Besides that, we also need to determine what sort of attic space do we have or even the fact that you know do, does our design have any attic space in the case that you know it, it has attic space there are actually two categories to it non-ventilated and also ventilated so how do we determine if our roof design is a non-ventilated or ventilated because if you notice in here for the ir reflective this is actually referring to aluminium so if you are using an aluminum foil, definitely you will be either 1.09 or 1.36. So you notice that having a natural ventilator or a ventilator attic, it actually gives a much more higher boost to the R value, which is a good thing if you are looking to achieve the necessary U value calculation. How do we determine this? If you notice the uh, condition three and four, it stated that, you know, if our opening ratio is not less than 1 over 600 of the attic area, then yes, it is a natural ventilated attic. If we do not meet that ratio of 1 over 600, then it is an unventilated attic. So as an example here, usually uh, for a roof, if we are talking about ventilated, there's actually four points to it we might or might not use all four points. For example, point A and B, it is not too commonly used in Malaysia. A more common method that we use is at the overhang area, which is the C and the D. So firstly, we have to determine the horizontal area of the attic space. So let's say, let's say the attic area is 100 meters square. 
And as long as A, B, C, and D add up together, we have a opening area of more than or equals to 1 over 600 of the 100 meter square, then yes, it will be classified as an attic space. In another words, if you could meet 1%, actually 1% is slightly higher, rate, but if you could meet 1% of the attic area opening of 1%, then yes, you are a ventilated attic. If you're, you could not meet this criteria, then it will be classified as an unventilated attic. So how do we achieve ventilated attic? There, there are many ways to do it. The more common way that we are doing, uh, a lot of the, the architects or even the developers they are, they are using is actually to incorporate ceiling boards like this in the overhang area. There are many brands out in the market, but the purpose are the same. If you have all these holes or gaps in the ceiling board, and this hole and gap is actually directly connecting to the attic space. So air can flow in and out and create a ventilation cycle. This is why this is considered a ventilated attic. Whereas for Western countries, you know, they, they do have this sort of design as well, where it is actually a sort of like a opening or even a window that allows air to flow in and out of the attic. So this is also a way for us to have achieve ventilated attic. So then, before we move on to calculating all this U-value, we have to make sure we have all this necessary information. We must know what is the roof pitch angle that we are dealing with. What are the roof, tile, roof, roof type? Is it a roof tiles or is it using a metal tag, RC slab, and so on? The insulation material being used. Are we using any form of radon barrier, reflective insulation, or even some insulation wool? The baton thickness? the rafter thickness, and also, if applicable, the attic type. Is it a non-ventilated or ventilated, or even the fact that it does not have an attic? So with all those information, we can then tabulate to calculate the U-value calculation. So the, the diagram on the left side is actually an example of the roof uh, structure. For the first part, we would have an external airflame. And by the way, for all the uh, criteria here that we, we have labeled in red color, highlighted in red color font, it is actually a standard and fixed number that we'll be using. So irregardless of your different roof structure, your different baton height, pitch angle, all this number will be remain the same as a standard uh, figure. So for a roof tile, it is actually set as 0 0.014. This is all thermal resistance, which is R value. So secondly, what will be the, be the baton height? In this case, example, let's take 30 mm as the baton height, which gives us 0 0.78. But how do we get this 0 0.788? It is from this table. Again, if let's say the angle is, the pitch angle of the roof is 20 degrees, and the baton thickness is 30 mm, we can see that this actually cross-reference to 0 0.788 SDR value, which is where we'll be parking this. Now, this is where we have to be careful because we have to understand what sort of radon barrier or refractive insulation we are using. Is it pure aluminium or is it metallized? Because that would tell us which table to refer to. And in the case of the reflective insulation, the thermal resistance, the R value, is actually provided by the manufacturer because we are, it is compulsory for us to have all these numbers in order to calculate the U value. So this is actually acquired from the manufacturer, similarly to the plasterboard as well. We have several different kinds of thickness in the market. And depending on the thickness and also the manufacturer, they might or might not have different R value. So this plasterboard and reflective insulation will have to refer to the manufacturer's advice. Then for this example, let's say we are meeting the ratio of opening 1 over 600. So this is a ventilated attic. In this case, we will park the figure of 1.36. And once we have all this number up, we can total it up to get the total R value. In this case, it's 2.554. 
So to calculate U value is actually very simple. We just have to take one divided by the total R value, which is 2.554. And we could get a U value of 0 0.39. So in regards to the UBBL cost 38A, we actually meet the requirement of 0 0.4 and below for lightweight roof. So this is an example of a calculation that we have passed. Another example is that let's say, you know, we change the pitch angle from 20 degrees, we change to 15 degrees. And from an unventilated attic, we change it to an unventilated attic. Pardon the typo here, this is supposed to be an unventilated attic. So everything is actually the same, 0 0.044, external airflow, roof tile, and also internal airflow. All these are standard numbers. So we do not make any changes to it. The changes that we need to change is depending on the baton, the thickness of the baton, in this case, 50 mm. So similarly, 50 mm, let's say we are going back to the aluminium one, the 0 0.03 emittance. At 15 degrees, with 50 mm of baton thickness, we can see that it gives us a value of 0 0.950. So this is where we park these numbers. So let's say you know we are changing into a better reflective insulation. In this case, the, the R value actually increases 0 0.185. And unfortunately, because due to the fact that it is an unventilated attic, the R value would actually be 1.09 instead of the 1.36 ventilated attic. So if we are using a thicker plasterboard, that also helps contribute to a higher R value but we can see that the numbers actually is very, very minimal. The, number, the change of the number is very minimal. So to achieve U value, to have a more effective thermal, thermal transmittance value, what we could actually change up in, a, in terms of our design is that the thickness of the baton, the design of the attic, and also the choice of the reflective insulation that we're using. These are all the few factors that have plays a bigger role in achieving the necessary new value. So another example here is, what if you know we have a uh, design where it does not have any attic space? It's an inclined ceiling design. Like in this diagram, you can see the ceiling board is inclined instead of the horizontal. So what difference does it make is that in this case where it does not have an attic, instead of taking the value from an attic space, we use the value from the rafter. And where do we refer to this value? We refer to them in the same table as well. 15 degree angle with 75 mm rafter. We do refer to, to the same method as well. So for the baton, let's say we are looking at 35 mm. That gives us a value of 0 0.861. But in the case, if let's say we are looking at the rafter, which is 75 mm, we have a R value of 1.042. This is where the table actually contributes in terms of the U value calculation. So with all those numbers tabulated, we achieve an R value of 2.354. And when we convert this into U value, we notice that, hey, no, this does not meet the minimum requirement of 0 0.4. In fact, it exceeds. So this calculation cannot be endorsed and cannot be passed. So there are a few special cases that is worth uh, highlighting, worth noting about is that having a counter uh, For those that are unfamiliar with counter it is actually an additional baton that is placed parallel to the rafter or to the truss. And above the counter we will be placing the foil and followed by the baton, then the roof tiles. So that is how it goes if we are going to incorporate counter to it. And the purpose of counter is that we are actually increasing the air gap, which means with the additional of the, with, with the standard 30 mm baton and enclosed airspace, we could get 0 0.788. But with the addition of having a 25 mm counter baton, we can get another 0 0.725 of R value. So adding them up, that gives us almost 1.5 R value, which is a very significant boost if we are looking to improve on the U value. Besides that, uh, you could consider the fact that, you know, since you have a counter baton, 
we could also incorporate a second layer or a double layer reflective insulation. Like in this case of diagram, the purple dotted line is actually the reflective insulation. Usually we would only have one reflective insulation above the rafter followed by the baton and that's it. But having a counter baton actually gives us an opportunity to incorporate a second layer of reflective insulation, which is also a bigger boost if we are looking to achieve the, uh, the necessary yield value. So, few key points that I would wish to highlight is that uh, according to the guidebook, what we could summarize is that the lower the pitch angle, definitely the higher the R value, which is also translate to even better in achieving the required U value, easier to, re to achieve. That also applies to the baton and the purlin. The thicker the baton, of course, that would incur much cost, but at the same time, it creates a higher or bigger air gap or enclosed airspace, which also contributes to higher thermal resistance as well. And then the second point is that you do notice that we always talk about radon barriers and reflective insulation. They are both actually different product categories. Radon barriers are all those woven aluminum foil, which is very thin, almost like paper light. Whereas reflective insulation is referring to the bubble insulation, which it has a certain thickness and it has a bubble in between the aluminum foil. So radon barrier itself, it does not possess any thermal resistance. If we look at the example, reflective insulation, it has a thermal resistance. So let's say we, uh, we changed up item four into a radon barrier. Automatically, this will be zero. It does not have any value to it. But that doesn't mean that having a radon barrier does not contribute to the thermal efficiency. It doesn't mean that having a radon barrier is pointless. Only having reflective insulation is useful, no. Because do remember, the baton and the rafter is actually dependent on the surface one and surface two of the radon barrier or reflective insulation. So if you are using a good radon barrier, a double-sided aluminum radon barrier, it actually plays a role in contributing to the thermal resistance at the baton and also the rafter. In fact, using an aluminum radon barrier is much more better than using uh, metallized uh, radon barriers because this will get a lower value if you use a metallized one. So that is how the radon barrier actually contributes to the thermal resistance. And if you do notice, right, in the thermal resistance, the RSI table in the booklet, it actually only shows measurement up to 125 mm for the baton, the rafter, and also the enclosed airspace. So the reason being is that, uh, firstly, how, where do we get these numbers? Where do RIM and GBI get these numbers? They actually use a machine, a machine to calculate all these figures. So they do notice that, you know, after 125 mm onwards, the changes of the thermal resistance, the changes of the R value is actually very, very minimal the increment is so minimal that it is actually negligible. So to make things much easier for the user, anything that is above 125 mm, for example, you have 150 mm enclosed airspace, we will still refer to the maximum, which is 125 mm, due to the very, very minimal uh, changes to the R value. Okay, so before I move on, uh, I would like to suggest probably you could take a five minute coffee break and we'll be back here by, it's 10.42 right now, so we'll be back here by 10.47. Okay, hi everyone. I hope everyone is back. So now we'll move to the next part, which is the leak proof. Back to this purpose of the roof. It functions to protect us. So meaning to say that it has to be secure. It has to be able to protect us through rain and shine on a daily basis, which also indirectly saying that that roof has to be leak-proof. It is not something to be negotiated about. It is not something to be compromised. How do we define leak-proof? It is defined as impervious or resistance to leakages, and it does not allow any form of liquid substance to flow through the material 
the structure or even the system. This is how we define leak proof. And that begs us the question, you know, where does the roof usually leak? Frankly speaking, it can leak from anywhere. But the most prominent areas, few areas that the roof actually leaks from is the abutment area, the firewall, the ridge or the heat area of the roof, even the ventilation, uh, ventilation pipe area. These are the few areas that we actually always deal with leakages or rather to say that it's more prominent or more higher risk for leakages. So for the ridge and the hip area, traditionally, even, even sometimes, you know, up to this age of the day, this is not something uncommon. We still do see installation methods like this, where wet fix is being used as the adhesive, the choice of adhesive to install all the ridge and hip tiles to the roof. But what we can conclude from this is that, firstly, at the first glance, it does not look pleasing to the eye. It does not provide any benefit in terms of the visual appeal. And secondly, cement mortar solution is not a long-lasting solution. Very often, within probably a year or two, hairline cracks occurs all over it. A more severe one would actually cause the tiles to actually dislodge. And this actually exposes the inner of your roof. Imagine having this above your roof right now. Every time it rains, rainwater actually goes in and causes leakages. So what I or what BMI suggests is that, you know, instead of going for the conventional wet fix, which does not provide uh, a long lasting solution, it does not provide any aesthetic appeal to the user or to the installer. Why not go for a different solution, a dry fix solution, similar to how the picture looks like? It looks something like this as well, where it can be applied at the ridge and also the hip of the roof before the fittings. So there are a lot of dry fix solutions in the market right now. In fact, there are many, many different brands all over the world as well. So the question is, how do we choose the right dry fix to be used to ensure that we have a leak-proof roof? The most important, there are many criteria, you know, it comes in all different sizes, all different colors, and even some different uh, materials as well. But all in all, I would say the main criteria that we do have to focus on is the adhesive. If we were to peel off the aluminum, the, the plastic film at the back, the PVC film, you can see the adhesive. Is it a black color? Is it a gray or white color? If it's a black color, like what we are showing in this picture, they are generally bituminous adhesive. They are made of bitumen. So the issue with this adhesive is that it is not that it is a bad adhesive. It's a good adhesive. But unfortunately, depending on the country, the climate that we are in, we are in Malaysia where our climate is actually a tropical climate. We do get hot weather. We do get uh, flood season as well. We do get very humid. We do get very dry. So all this condition actually does not uh, contribute so much to the performance of bituminous adhesive. In fact, it actually more easy or more higher risk to get hardened over time under these severe tropical climate conditions. So as an example, this is a bituminous adhesive dry fix that we applied onto a roof tiles. So as we peel, peel this off, we do notice that, you know, you can see that it does not actually adhere to the roof tiles. It can be actually peeled off easily. The reason being because the bitumen has already hardened. So once it gets hardened, there will not be any holding strength. There will not be any stickiness or tackiness to the adhesive. In contrast, a better choice would be a butal adhesive dry fix. Usually it comes in gray, darker gray or lighter gray but it usually comes in gray. So the, the benefit of this adhesive is that it has a very good holding strength. It has high tackiness or stickiness and very, very low risk of hardening, suitable for tropical country. You can see in the picture, once it has been applied and you try to peel it off, you can see all the adhesive is actually holding on strongly to each other. That 
shows the holding strength and also the techiness. And we want this to be on top of our roof to ensure that we have a leak-proof solution for the longest time possible. Compared to this, a very significant difference and very obvious as well. So the difference between the wet fix and the dry fix solution is that wet fix, you have to apply after or even during the installation of fitting, where in most cases, it will be along, along these gaps, making it very obvious and very untidy. But a dry fix is applied before the installation of these cappings or fittings. So once you have a, installed a complete roof, you, and most time you, you don't even notice that there's a dry fix underneath. You do still see this you know, a little bit here and there, but it is not obvious and it looks much more cleaner and neater. This provides a leak-proof solution and also provides an aesthetic appeal to the user as well. So the second part where it's actually very prominent to get leakages is the apartment area. Some call this the party wall, fire wall, it's basically referring to the same area. So for this area, a very popular choice that people use is actually GI metal flashing or even capping. These are very popular choice. In fact, it is actually one of the most prominent choice that uh, install installers, contractors, or even developers will opt for. But the issue with this is that uh, you can see that GI metal flashing are usually flat. So if you were to apply it above a roof tiles with profiles, with curvatures, what we notice is that the, the gaps or the areas below are actually exposed. These are all contributing to the risk of water leakages later on. Furthermore, the other concerns that we, we would have is that in most cases, due to the severe uh, UV aging, the weathering, we see that the metal flashing coating or even paint actually peels or drop off after a period of time. And after some time, your house might not look so pleasing anymore due to the usage of this material. And let's say, what if your firewall, the, 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 the installer or the contractors did a bad job in the, in the plaster wall? They did not plaster everything properly or did not coat everything properly. Does having a metal flashing helps in this case? No, it does not. You can see that in the picture here, the metal flashing actually only focuses on the edge. At the point where the, the wall meets the roof tiles, anything above it, like in this picture, with a black, with a bad plastering work done on it, you can see that with all those gaps, these are all also creates a high risk for water to seep through and leak through your roof later on as well. So these are the concerns that we would have if we were to use this solution. So again, the proper one that we would propose is why not go for a dry fix solution? It's faster, it's cleaner, and it provides as much more ease of mind to us. And you can see that it's actually a very neat and tidy uh, outlook or outcome after everything. Looking at the picture at the left side here, you do notice that there is a metal strip here that is installed on the wall. So what is this? It is actually this, this strip here. So the idea is that uh, having a good dry fix with a good adhesive, it helps to hold on to the surface. But unfortunately, holding on to a roof tiles will not be a problem. But holding on to the surface of the wall, there are several concerns. No matter how good of an adhesive that you use, the concern is that that adhesive is sticking onto the coating or to the plaster or even to the paint onto the wall. So in case if the quality of those coating or paints are not up to par, it gets built off, that would also affect our dry fix that we are using on the wall. So to prevent that, usually it will be encouraged to install additional metal strip onto the dry fix, which is onto the wall later on. So having this will ensure that uh, even if you are using a very bad coating, we can ensure that that particular dry fix is still holding on to the wall and providing us with the leak-proof solution as well. 
So for the third part early on, you can see that uh, besides the reach and hip and also abutment area, ventilation is ventilation pipe is also a major concern that we are dealing with. Ventilation pipe is important is an important part of the house. You know, we cannot avoid not installing this because it helps to ventilate all those air and gases out of the toilet. It also helps to prevent the pressure and odor, odor the smelly smells that builds up in the bathroom or the toilet as well. So we have to have this in our roof. And a lot of times, we could see that you no know, solutions like this being installed onto the roof. Of course, looking at this, uh, it might seem like you know it's fast, it's easy, but it does not look nice and it does not hold on so well because these are all cement mortar as well. And as the earlier examples that I showed, cement mortar very easily will have cracks and this will later on cause leakages, which we do not want. So, few questions that we need to ask ourselves. Do they work? Are they pleasing to the eye? Will there be any risk of leakages later on? Yes, they do work, you know. The ventilation still happens. But do they look good? Do you feel happy seeing this every day? No, I do not think so. And will there be any risk of leakages in the short term and so long term in the future? Yes, definitely, because this is not a very long lasting solution. So a better solution would be something that, you know, it's able to blend in with the surrounding roof tiles. It's able to provide with a sense of uniformity in terms of the the shape, the sizes, and even the colors. And also the most important part, by providing uniformity, we're actually making sure that there is no gaps available and making sure that it is a leak proof. So things like this, different colors, different sizes, we must have uniformity to ensure leak proof. Looking at one or two of it, you know, you might not feel so, so strongly about the uniformity. But if you have a whole stretch or whole blocks of houses that is using the similar uniform solution to it, the overall uh, effect, overall visual appeal is that it looks very clean, very neat, very tidy. So to recap, leak-proof solution is not something, uh, it's not like, one part here and one part there is actually as a whole. We have to ensure that for the rich and hip area, you know, we are providing or using the right solution that is giving, uh, giving, giving us the sense of security that it will not leak. Even for the abutment as well, for the ventilation system, all this have to be using the correct and proper solution to ensure a leak proof as a whole. In fact, we will actually recommend you know, look at roof system as a as a look at roof as a system look at it as a complete package although the components come in, in individual uh, parts and all but look at it as a whole you know by having all the necessary uh, solutions or components with the roof we are creating we are actually creating a closed system a system where we are able to ensure leak proof in the areas that the those prominent risky area and most importantly we have to maintain the integrity of the roof as a whole system so that we are able to create a more reliable roof structure this is what we meant by roof system okay so um before i pass back to architect b for the q a session i would like to we have actually a little bit of engagement activity to be done with the participant so it is actually a sort of a quiz where please do go go to this website and key in this code that you see on the screen and we will have a short quiz there so it's, it's not a test or anything so don't worry the purpose of this is so that we could have some engagement with the participant at the same time the the winner or the highest scorer would actually receive a gift from us so if you you are the highest scorer at the end of the session please do uh, send a message to me or even to Kamalia or Architect B so we would actually get more details from you and send you the gift later on. So please do go to receive this website and key in the code.
If there's any issue accessing this, please do let me know as well. Wow, oh, okay. I've seen many players inside already. Okay, probably we give another few more minutes or even five minutes to let everyone come in. Okay, there's about 27 participants, but I think we can expect a little bit more. Okay, in case if you miss out on the code, it's actually above the screen here as well. 4457. Uh, maybe I can type it into the chat box. Ah, thanks. Thanks, Lena. So the code and the website link is on the chat box already. You can key in. Thirty-five participant. Okay, it's growing. Probably a few more minutes. Another, another minute, maybe? All right, so just for you guys to know, these questions are actually very, very basic questions. So it's just to get some engagement. And the faster you answer with the correct answer, the more points that you'll be getting. So if you do know the answer, you have to be answering it as fast as possible to get the higher points. Forty-four. All right. I think you know what? Maybe we can begin. So we have a total of 44 participants right now. And we will be starting. So you, you will have to refer to the screen for the question and answer using your phone, okay? Let's begin. Okay. Ah. Sorry, I think it's not moving. Ah, okay. Hold on, yeah.
Okay, question two. Oh. Hold on, sorry, there's a bit of technical error. a minute okay all right Okay, so currently it's leading by Munifa. No, KES. Okay. Okay, the next question. Okay, let's see who's the leader right now. Thirty-three. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, wow. So, so far, it's still a very tight competition. Still can go anyone's way. Okay. In seven.
Okay, so now it's leading by pay S. Okay, a few more questions to go. Okay, the last question. Okay, so the winner is Song. Congratulations, Song. Um, Song, can you actually either send me a message or send to uh, Northern, Northern Chapter message as well so that we can know who you are and we can arrange to send you the gift for this quiz? Okay, I think uh, thanks, Mr. Lee, yep. for your informative and comprehensive uh, presentation on uh, roof insulation and complete roof system. So, and also, uh, also actually uh, having this uh, very interesting quiz session, and congratulations to Song as the winners. So, uh, okay, as conclusion, I think as architect, uh, we shall design uh, the building roof seriously to make sure it complies to the law and provide a protection to occupants below the roof. And I believe BMI can provide us a very good consultant, uh, consultation on it. Uh, do not waste more time. Now I think we can start our Q&A session. Okay. So, uh, so okay. Whoever have any question to our speaker, okay. They can actually uh, either raise your hand button at middle below the screen, just press, press it, then you can call your name and you can unmute yourself to raise the question. Or, okay, or actually, you can just drop in the chat box, our speaker will answer to you. So I hope uh, anyone can actually raise your question to regarding uh, any question to our speaker about the roof view value or the complete uh, roof system. Hello. Hi, Hi yeah. Ah, yeah, I want to ask the vent pipe just now that he was saying, what do you call that thing around it? How, how do we specify it? Hi, Hi, Ada. 
So like, the, the whole thing is called a ventilation pipe set. So uh, in case that if you wanted to specify this, you could just write ventilation pipe. Ventilation pipe set would probably be better. Oh, ventilation pipe set, uh, S-E-T, you mean, is it? Yes, correct. Oh, okay. What is the material made of? Um, okay, the reason why we call it a set is because uh, there are actually few few different components that include in one whole package. So, of course, the, the reason why you can see the uniformity is because we have a, a, the roof tiles, which have already been pre-produced with a, a gap, a hole in between. So, what makes it watertight is the black color material. I think you are looking mm -hmm. for the black material, right? Yes. That is actually, uh, the, the official name is an EPDM rubber compound. So, it's a rubber okay. material. So, it's like, so we can't just buy that um, black um, material just for any vent pipe, is it? It has to be together with the vent pipe. Yes, actually, conventionally, uh, either from the pictures that I show you, the conventional way of installing a vent pipe would be either to just uh, use a GI metal sheet to replace the roof tiles, or the installer could opt to cut cut a hole in the roof tile and then let the pipe come through it. So that makes it not a perfect fitting. So if you are using the black color rubber, you have to couple up with the proper uh, hole the correct hole size so that it is actually tight fitting. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there is a question from the chat box. So, uh, there's from uh, Pay S. Is, uh, what is the most efficient and cost-effective waterproofing system for RC roof, RC flat roof? Uh, is it? Uh, hi, Pay Yes. So for this question, I don't think I'll be able to provide you with a good answer because for actually for flat roof, uh, we do actually deal with flat roof, but it's actually handled by another team. So probably they would be a better, they'll be able to give you a better answer. If you don't mind, you could actually drop me a private message on your contact details. We can get them to talk to you. Okay. So, okay, another question from uh, Lim Tak. Lim Tai Eng. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Notice that BMI system is tethered to last. What's the guarantee lasting period? Please also comment on the terms and concerns. Um, okay. So for the uh definitely it's true. We do test our uh, all our products in the Germany Technical Center as shown in the video earlier. So the guarantee period uh we provide because we, we provide as a system. So we provide a system guarantee ranging from three to five years as a whole system, uh, ensuring that it has the necessary rain tightness and water tightness to prevent leakages. So in terms of the TNC, uh, definitely we are liable if it's a product defect or a product that is not performing as intended to, definitely we will cover that. But if it's due to a poor workmanship or improper use of the product, then we are not liable to that. I hope I answer your question. Uh, so, okay. Uh, is there any question from the, from the Zoom? Okay, I think uh, beside that also, I have some question to... Okay, there is question from... Lei San U, uh -huh. for the ventilated roof attic space, is there any other requirement other than the opening should be one over 600 of roof attic area? If the opening should be the at the top and bottom. Okay, so uh, for ventilated roof attic, currently we only classify whether is it a ventilated or unventilated using the opening ratio of one per 600. And in, in regards of where the opening should be, there is no specific uh, requirement as long as that opening is directly uh, impacting the attic space or directly flowing in and out of the attic space, then it's fine. It could be at the side of your wall. It could be at the overhang of your roof. It doesn't matter. Um, just wonder if, if the, uh, the, all the opening actually at the bottom, so is it? allow the ventilation through actually the main uh, from the the main for the for the ceiling system uh, the ceiling opening 
if they flow in from the ceiling, is it the when the, the air actually can flow through the ceiling as well? If I mean in the case so of if if let's say you are looking to to achieve it through the use of some probably a certain ceiling board with holes in it, let's say you're putting installing at the overhang of the roof. So that hole actually allows the air to flow in to the attic and also flow out only through the ceiling board with those holes. For the ceiling board that does not have any hole, there, there won't be any air flowing in and out of it. Okay, because uh, we, as we are understanding, the air normally actually flow up, we flow to higher level. So if the air flow into the bottom, then we will actually flow up to the bottom as well. Uh, okay. Depends on the product as well. In fact, actually, uh, there are certain products in the market where in the apex, let's say the reach of the roof, the highest point, mm. if let's say mm. you're using a certain dry fix, there are also dry fix with breathable membranes, meaning to say that, like what you mentioned, the air actually flows in through the ceiling board and out from that area of the roof as well, from above of it. But of course, we have to be careful because uh, not all dry fix have this feature. Most of the dry fix are not breathable, so the air does not flow up. So that means uh, it advises that to have uh, both bottom and up uh, top actually is uh, opening. But that would be the best to have a more efficient uh, ventilation cycle. Okay, I see. Then we have a next question from uh, Lim Tai Eng. If it is tested in Germany, is it applicable to equatorial climate? Okay. So I guess, uh, Lim, so yes, it is tested in Germany, but the weather condition or the weather criteria that we set into the testing machine is actually based on the Malaysia's weather. In fact, we took the worst weather condition in the last 50 years, to, meaning to say that we put the worst condition in Malaysia for the last 50 years and test out our products. So it is, yes, applicable to our country, climatic condition. And I think, let me allow me to answer his questions at the bottom as well. Yes. So what happens after the three to five years guarantee period? So the reason why we actually provide a system guarantee of three to five years is not that after three or five years, that product doesn't work. It's because that if the product has a def certain defect or it has some uh, quality issues, usually the problem will occur almost immediately. It will not occur after three or five years. So the reason of us providing three to five years is a uh, more of a standard policy of the company. And between these three to five years, we would actually service you. If there is any uh, any issues, we can also provide site visit to ensure what is the issue and provide you with the necessary reports as well. Okay, I think the next question will be from KS. Are the waterproofing system recommended applicable to metal deck roof. I think it should be the insulation system is it? Yeah. or waterproofing system. I'm not so sure from PS. I think, I think probably PS you are talking about maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the probably the dry fix that we are offering oh. now that I've, I've shown earlier. So in case if you're ask, asking about that, uh, all of our products, dry fixes, underlays, insulation, all included, they are tested in Germany. And the testing condition is based on roof tiles because that is our core business, concrete and clay roof tiles. So whether it can be used for metal deck or not, I would say uh, it can be used, but we are unfortunately, we are unable to provide you with any uh, guarantee because we do not test it under metal deck due to the fact that it is not uh, one of the products that we offer. We test it with uh, concrete and clay roof tiles. Okay, another question from Peter. Will utilization of ventilation termite at roof help improve on the U value calculation? Ventilation termite, as long as it is actually connected to the attic, then yes, it will actually uh, help because it helps to create an airflow in and out of out of your out of your attic, actually, in fact. So how do we calculate the opening size? Uh, I would say similarly to how we calculate those uh, opening size for ceiling boards, we have to have the area of the, the gaps, the opening, in order to determine. It's a little bit tedious, but we that is actually the, the only way that we can calculate. 
Okay, then there's an, the next question from uh, Wei Song Wang. Is there a minimum roof pitch recommended for the dry fix solution? Uh, currently, no. There is no minimum roof pitch. Minimum roof pitch is only applicable to the installation of uh, roof tiles. So for dry fix, as long as there is a roof tiles there, we are able to apply. There is no minimum roof pitch. Okay, so another question from Mr. Lin Taing again. So I would like to think that three to five years is too short. Minimum life period of building should be around 60 years. So can you comment? Okay. Definitely agree to the fact that you know the minimum life period of building should be about 60 years or even more in certain cases. Uh, in terms of the product, uh, currently we are well, we are looking to see if we provide more. But due to the current uh, standard that we are using, we, are, we can only provide three to five years of system guarantee. I won't be able to comment too much on this because we are still uh, probably looking into improving in this aspect. Okay, so is there any question? Okay, there's another question from PayS. Do you offer a roof system integrated with solar panel or solar heater? What is the waterproofing solar panel fixing system on all roof tiles? Okay, uh, yes. we do offer a, a, one of the products that we do offer is actually the solar, what we call the solar roof. So it's actually a solar water thermal, thermal water system, meaning to say by using solar, we are able to generate hot water for your shower. So we do offer that. And in terms of the solar panel fixing system, uh, in the case, if you are using an old roof or even a new roof, the method of fixing is the same. Firstly, we would have to determine the position of the solar panel because that actually takes up the bulk of the area. Then once we determine the area, we have to mark down several points for us to, for us to install the, uh, the support, the fixing. Once we have marked down the several points, we have to remove the old tiles because we have to install the, the fixing onto the baton so that it, it, it is secure. After all the necessary fixing are done, then we would then reinstall back the tiles into their original position and then keep the solar panel and tanks on it. That is the more general way of explaining it. Lah. Okay. Uh, okay, that's another question. Does the care value of the reflective insulation bubble point shown in the test report? Uh, yes, it is shown in the test report along with the uh, R value. In fact, actually, uh, if we have the R value, then we, we do not need to know the care value lah, because in the end of the day, what we need is the R value. Okay. So, are there any questions from the floor? Okay, I think uh, I, I got a question to ask also. Okay, I just I wish to understand what's the benefit for insulation with radiant barrier compared to mass insulation? Okay, uh, radiant barrier is, let's say we take uh, woven aluminum foil, for example, and mass insulation. The difference is that uh, the purpose and the objective for, for the radiant barrier, the objective is to provide uh, reflectivity, to reflect the heat, providing thermal comfort. For the mass insulation, of course, it does provide thermal comfort. But at the same time, I would say the main purpose is actually to serve as a sound insulation material, to help to insulate sound, making it more quieter. And the usage area will be different as well. For residential with normal concrete or clay roof tiles, uh, we are using a lot of the radiant barriers or even reflective insulation. But for mass insulation, it's more towards the metal metal roofing market because it's, it's, it, pro it produces much more noise. So they need to insulate in terms of sound. Okay. Okay, just now, uh, there's a, I think just now I got a question about the, the roof system, the overall, overall system, I mean, BMI actually provide overall system. If if some client that I mean, okay, the overall system is it including the radiant barrier system? I mean the insulation. Yes. If there is a case that some client they wish to to go for 
if uh, the mass insulation rather than radiant barrier, then actually is it the warranty or guarantee will be void or actually still them for the whole system? So for the case of our system guarantee, uh, the reason why we call it a system is because we, we, we put it as a whole package of a BMI products. But in the case, if let's say you have a, let's say a third party product in that particular system, we will not be able to cover you as a system, but we would still provide you with the individual product warranty. Understand? Okay. So, okay, is there, I think, is there any question from the floor? Okay, there's one new. Can you comment on the cost of BMI system? Cost? Um, again, probably I'm not the right person to talk on the cost, but uh, in general, I think um, definitely, you know, it's not, it's not a secret that, you know, we, we cost more compared to the other brands. But in return, we provide you with the service, the quality, and also the product guarantee as well. So if you wanted to find out more on the total cost, the, the exact cost comparison of, of all this, uh, I would say I'm not the best person to answer this because uh, I would need to refer to the sales team for a better answer. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any question or maybe we have we can uh, stop here or if you have any further question also I think you can email to Mr. Lee or Selina uh, maybe I suggest uh, they actually provide their email in the chat box so actually anyone can email to them sure let me start in my email By the way, uh, Selina is actually our specification colleague, so uh, please feel free to approach her if you have any inquiries or questions. Uh, I think she just dropped off her number there, so you, you guys can give her a call if you have any other inquiries. Okay. So if do uh, do not have any further question from the floor, then uh, we may end this session now. I wish to take the opportunity to thanks again uh, to BMI, make sure to sponsor this program and share their knowledge. And thank you to architect uh, Chong Ko Chong, our education chairman, to arrange this event. And not to forget our secretary and the support from Garis PXL to make this a uh, successful webinar. Okay, thank you everyone attending this uh, webinar today. Bye-bye. Thank you.